So today I got a, a lime green DS in the mail. Um, it looks like it was in pretty good condition. I got it for a pretty good price. And uh, it's got an issue with the charging port. So we're going to see if we can bring this back to life. I mean, it's a, otherwise a really good condition system. So we're going to see what we can do. Um, I've told that the charging port is the issue, so I already went ahead and ordered a part. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this under the microscope. So here's the charging port of the Lime Green DS, and <laughs> this is not at all what it's supposed to look like. This is uh, this is what the charging port is supposed to look like. Uh, it looks like the entire uh, plastic part has just been completely ripped off. Maybe someone uh, someone tore the charger out or something like that, or they tripped on a cable. So I got the replacement part, so we're going to go ahead and uh, take the lime green DS backplate off, and we're going to see what we're working with. So uh, here's the charging port on the board. Um, everything, everything looks pretty good. Here is a signature from the factory, probably indicating quality check. Um, here's the volume slider that looks clean, and also there's no water damage. The indicator still got the dots. If it was all pink, that would mean it's water damaged. Um, the only other thing I'd be curious about is this fuse indicated by that uh, F1. I'm going to pull up my multimeter just to, just to check on that to see what else is going on. There's this coil here. Usually, usually it's fine. Sometimes this fuse can go bad. And if the charging port got ripped out, if, uh, it doesn't look like anything was touching, but I'm going to go ahead and pull up my multimeter to check that now. Okay, so I got my multimeter in continuity mode. I touch them both. You hear the beep. So let's check that fuse. Yeah. Seems fine. Okay. So... I'm going to go ahead and pull the board out. Um, I'll put it on my jig, and then uh, we'll see what we're going to do to get this removed. I'll probably have to go from the back side and the front. So here's the uh, underside of the board. Looks a little dirty, probably just from over, over time. Um, I also noticed uh, like the two pins. It's really close to the, this little component here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my tip. I was going to use a bigger one, but I'm going to change it to something smaller because I want to access this small spot inside of here. Uh, we're going to add some low melt solder. It's just a solder that melts at a much lower temperature. So that way there's less chance of damaging or, or losing other components. Um, we're going to Add the low melt solder, which will mix it in with the, the factory. And then we'll blow some hot air and we'll get pull this port out. So I'll be back when that, that tip is on, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I got some uh, prep flux. Just going to add some to help the, help the low melt uh, just get in. And this just not want to go. There we go. Alright. Here I've got my, uh, my iron, my new tip. Let me make sure it's hot enough. I'm just going to check it. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. So let's go ahead and get some of this blow melt solder on the board.
So as I'm adding it in, this low melt is going to be mixing with the stuff that's there. And it only takes a little bit. Okay. Uh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the board over. We're gonna take a look at the other side. So I think what's going on is there's actually two pins. These two pins are going down through the board. So maybe we might only have to add it to this back side. I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Looks like these these two right here need a little more persuasion. Oops. Okay. And now I'm going to go to my hot air and we're going to take this off. Should be pretty should be pretty easy. I'll just heat it from the top side and then we'll pull it off. So I'll be right back. So my board jig actually wasn't uh, big enough. That's okay. Uh, I'm just gonna. I'm just holding it with some some clips on my soldering iron holder. And let's uh, see if we can get this off now. I felt my eye, uh, hot air at about 350 Celsius. I might have to turn that up just a little bit. Need to crank that up a little bit. I'm gonna go to 400. There we go. Okay. So now it's out. I'm going to take this off the clamps and we're going to clean it up and get it ready for the new port. So I've got some uh, cheap solder wick I'm just going to use to get the majority of this solder up. This stuff is kind of porous and not very good quality, but that's why I use it to get all the big stuff off because I don't like it and I want to get rid of it as soon as I can. Covering up now. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over and then we're gonna do the other side with some some better wick. I'm gonna add some flux. And then let's go ahead and use this higher quality wick to hopefully get the remainder of that out. Let's see, it's gonna give me a hard time. Oh, that one looks good. Let's see, just gotta get those holes cleared out. That's magical. 
beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So I think we're all ready for a new charging port. It's looking good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up the new port and then we're gonna I'm gonna clean off the board and uh, we'll see how it fits and we'll go from there. Oh just a quick note, while I got the board out, I just want to note here because Lately I've been working on a lot of uh, Nintendo Switches, and you see how, like, this is labeled voltage in, voltage ground. Um, like, the entire backside of this board is labeled. You can see the C means capacitor, and um, you got battery. It's really easy to tell what's going where, and things are labeled. On the new Nintendo boards, it's like they have the test points, literally nothing is labeled. Uh, so it kind of makes repairing those, unlike unless you know exactly what you're doing, uh, a pain in the butt. Like this, if if one of these was like completely shredded for whatever reason, I, I can know exactly where I need to route a wire to. Uh, just something interesting to note about uh, older Nintendo with the DS and then kind of where they're at now in terms of engineering. Okay, so this is all cleaned up. If you can't tell, I cleaned all the flux off and we're going to go ahead and do a test fitting of the new port. So the new port, it looks like it fits pretty well. Um, you can see it's got the middle part. <laughs> so let's, uh, I'm just going to put it in. And we'll go ahead and add some solder. And then we'll test it out. I'm going to get my fresh solder. It's leaded. I'm going to do, let's see, how do I want to do this? That's pretty snug. I want it to be flat against the board. So I'm going to, I'm just going to get something to prop it up on and push it down because I don't have, I don't have more than two hands. And I'm going to come back and clean this up after. Just want to get, just want to get it held down. Okay, let me get this in focus. And let me add some flux. I'll get this done in no time. That's beautiful. <sighs> Those power legs are kind of long. Okay, I'm going to clean it up. Then we'll put it back together and we'll we'll test it out. Looks good. Okay, before I stop recording, I just put it back together. Just want to see if uh, 
anything happens, and put the charger in this new port. Let's see. Hmm. Nothing. Oh! Hmm. Light comes on for a second. Could be a dead battery as well. So let's try this. I'm going to swap out the battery. I'm going to put in a known good one. And we'll come back and see what happens. All right, I just put a good battery in that I know works. And what do you know? Charges. Charging light stays on. Get power, get volume, and try again. Let's see if we have volume. Yep. Let's see. There's nothing saved on here, obviously, because I just pulled the battery out. Uh huh. Just want to make sure it actually plays games. So I got a couple of test games here. We're going to reboot. Here, I'll put two games in. I got a couple. So we can test both slots. Cool. Game Boy port works. I didn't see the DS port cartridge, though. So let's try again. Awesome, and the DS port works. So there it is. Just got to get a new battery in this, and then it's good to go. Give this DS a new home. Thanks for watching. If you like more videos like this, uh, let me know. If you if you have uh, something you want repaired, feel free to email me. I'll put it in the description. All right, take care.